This lesson, we're going to be setting up an AJAX request to a local JSON file. And we've got the data within the JSON file, the HTML code. When we click the button on the page, we've selected the button in the JavaScript, add an event to it, and we're going to be using fetch to the source code for the JSON file and then outputting the content onto the page. So we do have it, and we're also going to be exploring the difference between the file protocol and the HTTP protocol where the AJAX request won't work on the file protocol. So when I press start, we're going to see this error because we're using the file protocol on fetch and it's not going to be supported. So using the same code and within the editor, we can set up a, a local host on our machine and that's going to be using the local host port 5500 to the same file. And when we click start there, we are able to make a connection to the JSON data and output it on the page. So I'll walk you through the steps on how to set up the local host on Visual Studio Code as well in this lesson. Go ahead and create an index.html file. Within the file, create a div, give it a class so you can select it with the JavaScript code, select and create a button. So this will be our event that will trigger the AJAX request to the JSON file and then link it to a JS file. In this case, I've called it JS1.js. So that's going to be the JavaScript file where I'm going to be making the request to the AJAX content using the JavaScript connection. Go into your editor and also create a JSON file. And within this JSON file, let's go ahead and we're going to add in some data. So we're structuring it within an object that's going to be contained within an array. And I'll have some information such as the first, the first name within the JSON file that we're going to connect to using the JavaScript. Let's go back into the JavaScript code. And I've got the file opened on the right-hand side within the browser. I'm using the Chrome browser in order to open the file. I've just dragged it and I've opened up the file path that where the file is located on my computer. So this way, we're not going to be able to make the Ajax request and it's going to throw an error. And then I'll show you how you can set up a local connection using the editor, the Visual Studio Code editor, and then make connection to the JSON file. So first let's set up our JavaScript where we want to select the page elements from the page. We've got a couple page elements. So we want to get the button and use the button as the event trigger. So whenever the button gets clicked, so using the document query selector, selecting the element with an ID of BTN. So that will select the page element. I'm going to console log out the button just to make sure that we're able to select the element object. And there it is within the console on the right hand side. Let's also select the output area and that's going to be sitting within the element with a class of container. So again, using the query selector, we're selecting the element with a class of container and that will give us the two elements into the JavaScript code. And now we can make access and make use of them. So on the button, I'm adding in a click event. So using an on click, and this is just going to be running an anonymous function. Whenever the button gets clicked within the console, I'll just type the word clicked so that we can track and make sure that the button was clicked, refresh the page, can clear the console. And now whenever we click the button, we should see clicked in the right hand side within the console of the dev tools of the browser. So next up, we want to make a fetch request. So let's set up a global variable. We'll just call it URL. So this way, if we want to change the location of the JSON file, we can do it really easily within the top variables of our code. So that will be connecting to temp one JSON. Temp one JSON is actually sitting on the same directory as the JSON one JS file. So that's why we don't have to have any prefix to it. And we're simply linking to the file name. So we're making a fetch request to the URL. We're returning back the content as a value of data. Actually, we'll return it back as a response. So this is the initial response object that we're getting back. And then we want to return back that content as data. And this is where we want to output it into the console. So within the console log, we're going to output data. Once the button is clicked, it's going to run this block of code, which is going to make the fetch request to the URL, 
respond back the data as JSON because this is JSON formatted and then take it as data and output the content into the console. So refresh and once we start it, we see that we do have an error. URL scheme file is not supported. So what this error means is that we're making the request on the file protocol. We're not able to make an Ajax request using the file protocol and fetch. So that means that we need to set up a local server up using the local host. I am using Visual Studio Code. Within most editors, there are ways to run a local server. So within Visual Studio Code, if you're using it, you can select under code, under preferences, extensions, or you can open up the shortcut for the extensions. And within the extensions, you can do a search for the different extensions. And the extension that we're looking for is called Live Server. This is going to allow us to launch a development local server with Live Server. So I already do have it installed. So go ahead and install it. And this will give you access to run the extension. There's some more details and information about Live Server. It's a very popular download. There's over, over 20 mil, 19 million downloads on it. And it really does provide you a quick and easy way to run a live server on your website. Once you have the extension installed, go back into the HTML file. And from here, we can run the live server. So either by clicking, by right clicking anywhere in the open space within the HTML file, select open with live server. So this by default will open it up within the browser, have a HTTP address so this is the local address 127.0.0.1, port 5000. So this can be set within the settings of your editor. So I'm just using 5500, which is the default. So now when I click the button, let's open up the console and we see that we what we get for a response. The first time you load the file, it's gonna give you an error that the fav icon is not loaded. If you refresh it, that error message will go away. So now let's go ahead and we're gonna click start. So we get clicked and then we get the JSON content being returned back. So that's how you can solve the issue of connecting to it when you're connecting to it with the file protocol not working and then the same code is going to work when you are using the local server. You can also set this to localhost using the same file name and this will work when you're connecting to it using localhost. So this is going to be the root folder if you're not using index.html so that's going to be the default start location you can also create other files so i just renamed it to new one.html so now we can go over to new one.html and this is going to locate load the same file and the same code and allow us to connect to the json content so once you're able to establish a connection to the code and we can close this window so this is the file protocol we don't want to use that when we're making an Ajax request, and we do want to use the local host when we are making the Ajax request. Have the Ajax request working. I'm going to make the browser content, zoom it into 200. We're ready to use the data. So we'll create a function called add data. And once the request is made, you get the data object. And this is within an array format. So you can add other items into the object structure. And as long as you're structuring it the same way, retrieve back all of the items. And that means that we need to loop through the data before we can add it to the page. So to get the all of the objects out of the array. So for that, you can use for each. It's gonna output each person. We're gonna return back the person into the console before we output it into the web page. So these are each of the items within the JSON file. I'm going to comment out the clicked. And now once we can see it within the console, it's going to be relatively easy to add it into the output container. Create an HTML and I'll just call it results. And then as we loop through, we'll add to HTML whatever we've got for the value of person using the backticks for the template literals and create a div here. So person first and then person last. So you can bring in the object data with the property name using the dot notation. And then for the template literals, this is using the back tick, which is to the left of the one key on most keyboards. And then the dollar sign on the curly brackets will allow you to run the JavaScript syntax. And let's also add in the person ID. So that's the last property name that we had within the object and then we'll close off the div. 
And then lastly, for the output container, so we've already selected the element with a class of output. So we're going to just add that and set that HTML as the HTML object for the page. So once we click the start button, we get the results of the H1, and then we get each one of the items within the JSON file being output to the page. If our JSON file changes, and if we add in another user, and we make sure that the structure is the same, and we click the button, we're going to also get the third item, or how, whatever number of items that we have within the JSON file being output to the page. That's how you can set up a local Ajax request to a JSON file using Visual Studio Code, live server, setting up a local host, and the JavaScript code in order to make the connection.